Hey everyone, this is going to be a guide on how to speedrun Mega Man Legends, or as you can see here, Rockman Dash. Now before, not too long ago, I made a video called uh, 10 Tips on How to Speedrun Mega Man Legends or something like that. I recommend you go back and watch that first, because that one goes into a lot of detail on many of the mechanics we use for the speedrun. Because here in this guide, I'm not going to really go into those details, I'm just going to show how those techniques are used. And the last thing I want to mention is I'm on emulator. Specifically, EPSXE version 1.9.25. Doesn't really matter which emulator you use, but it's good at least to use one for learning and practice, even if you're going to run this game on console. This game benefits a lot from emulator practice. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so. The beginning of the game, the intro dungeon. So, start the game, let's get the first cutscene. Now, off the bat, we have an interesting thing going on here. So, right at this line here, there's a text box that will stop you in place. It's a tutorial text box. There's a number of these throughout the run. A lot in the intro dungeon here. And, of course, when you run up to it, it stops you in place, like I said. But what we want to do is jump through it to get a lot of extra free movement when we were supposed to be stopped. Because, like, for example... You start the game off, you run forward like one step, one footstep sound of Mega Man's, and jump. You'll land somewhere around here, and you'll have gotten a lot of free movement because you get stopped around there instead of where it's supposed to happen. So I'll show you. See? Extra free movement, no problem, just for jumping. So there's going to be a number of text boxes throughout this intro dungeon where you want to jump through them for that free movement instead of getting stopped in place. So, anyway, diagonal run, first turns to the right. Now there's another text box right here in front of this door, right at this line. And you want to jump right around here, right along this line. You want a diagonal jump towards the door and slightly turn right. And then you'll land in front of the door and get some free movement. Just like that. And so another text box, another tutorial. Now there's yet another one. As soon as I cross this line here in front of this door, I'll get another one. And the key thing for jumping through this one is you want to wait until the door is fully open. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me get rid of this guy real quick. So... You normally can't run through this door until it's fully open. Can you see what I mean? So that's the tip you need to keep in mind for this door, is don't jump until it has fully opened. So what I like to do is run at it, open it, and then as soon as it's fully open, then I jump. There. And skip them, go to the next one. Jump up here on this ledge. Now, there's a visual cue I use for getting a good diagonal jump for that. It's that red rectangle on the floor there. I use the bottom of it as my visual cue for when I jump. And there's another text box in this tunnel. You kind of see how the shading inside the tunnel starts to happen the further away you are and then it goes away the closer you get. You can kind of use these shading lines to really see when you're supposed to jump. I think it's that first shading line. Yeah, right there. A little bit of extra movement. Ignore that side path. All right, and then at this corner, stretching all the way across, you have another tutorial text box for the enemy up high, but the door is over there to the left. So when you're running diagonally, right before you jump, you kind of want to shift yourself to the left, like turn your camera a little bit and move Mega Man left, like that. And you want to come in here, and you want to destroy these two things and then get the Power Razor chest behind the barrier. Now there's a couple ways you can go about this. There's the really easy way, then there's the slightly more difficult way that saves you like less than a second or something, so the easiest way, jump up here, take this one, Take this one, go over here and grab the chest. 
Now, if you're really feeling ballsy, if you're really feeling like you're, you know, you want to take on all the hard crap, and here's how you do the hard strat. You want to jump, shoot two shots at it, and you hold shoot while you're getting out from the ledge. You'll shoot one shot for free before you even hit the ground. Then you start to shoot two more. And you'll take down that thing in three, uh, five shots total. So, like this. I'm not very good at it, so you have to forgive me. And then you kick the other one, and you grab the chest. So, it doesn't save very much time, and it can easily lose you a lot if you don't, you know, <laughs> if you're not very good at it, like I am. But, start off with, just, just kick him, it's easiest. Open this chest here, it's the power razor. And as you do this, jump off the ledge, open your menu, go down twice to buster parts. Put on the power razor. And then there's another, another text box right around here in the middle of this little hallway here towards the door. So sometime before that line, you want to just jump towards the door. And when it's all over, you'll already be ready for it and you just have to, you know, just press circle. Now if you saw my tips video, you should already know how to stutter shoot. So that's what a clean fight looks like, but the main tips I'll give you for it are do not stutter shoot two volleys in a row, except at the start and at the end where you do three. So at the very start, you walk forward like a step or two, stutter shoot two, then you step back, stutter shoot, step back, stutter shoot over and over again. Just make sure you back up a little bit so you avoid getting hit by the explosion from his smash. And as you keep practicing the fight, you'll start to get a feel for when he'll get a stun animation. And that's why we do three stutters at the end, because we're most likely going to cancel out the third one, or his smash attack right at the end, and just keep going at it really hard. So, stutter shoot two at the beginning, and one step back, one step back, one step back. Just over and over again for the entire fight. I do not recommend at all doing two... Then running back, because you're wasting a lot of time running back when you don't have to just move that far forward and then that far back. So just one step back, one step back, over and over again. So let's do it again. Run forward a little bit, two volleys. Step back, one, step back, one. And then on the very last volley, just shoot two. Because if you've hit him with three shots the entire time, the last two shots are what finishes him off. Skip all the cutscenes. Get ready to move to the right. Now there's a trigger zone. Kind of like, see the corner there of the mountain? It kind of goes diagonally across this way. So... Keep that in mind. If you want an easy visual cue, look for the corner of the mountain. And then as soon as this cutscene starts, skip it. Talk to Gramps. Skip. Practice your diagonal movement. Get your lines down. Now, if you want to just have some easy movement, go around the trees like that. Don't really want to... You know, stress yourself with some more nonsensical movement that actually is faster. The faster way to go through this is to weave between the trees, but you know, that takes a lot of movement practice. So until then, just go around the trees. It's much easier. Next, go in the junk shop. Old circle. Yes. Alright, then we're going to leave, and then we're going to begin the first little uh, mini dungeon. We like to call it Snake Pit. It's a really annoying place full of RNG, unfortunately. So, right in here.
What you want to do is go to the right, turn left, and you want to examine this hole in the wall over here for some Xenia. Ignore the enemies. Don't worry about them. Uh, you don't have to do that jump. Uh, so there's usually one snake here and a whole bunch in there. So if you can, shoot him while you're moving. If not, it's usually not a big deal. But as you come in here, just see where they're at. Shoot them all down. Now there's one annoying thing I need to mention. Is that sometimes when the snakes are around this corner, near this wall, your auto-aim can easily get stuck to the Zakobans on the other side. So, if there's snakes over here, you're really fighting the auto-aim. The solution is to, like, try and aim down at them, or just get behind them and face them like this. So, it's a really annoying thing to do, but if they're over there, <laughs> you're fighting the auto-aim, unfortunately. And the reason why you want to shoot the snake that's out here is because if that snake or any enemy period is roughly within this zone and in here further, including these Zakabans coming in. If the, anyone is in there, from here and further in, you can't save the guy. He'll be like, no, there's still an enemy, there's a snake or whatever. So make sure there's nothing in the area, and then you can get up here, save him, skip. So again, just ignore all the enemies. If there's any Zakabans directly in your way, jump over them. Head on out. Time to go back to the junk shop. I guess one thing I'll mention here is, uh, since money might be a little difficult for a new player to get, in the uh, speedrun sense, there's a couple of backups we have. The first backup being the item in this box. You don't need this if you're confident with your money collecting, but if you really think you're gonna struggle a little bit with your Zenny, go ahead and pick this up right now. Otherwise, you know, you don't usually need it, but it's a backup. You go in here. If you're on 64, funny enough, you don't have to turn or shift your movement or anything. Because on 64, this room is slightly smaller. You can just sit here and interact and you'll automatically talk to the lady. But on every other version of the game, you have to either slightly move to the right or turn to the right. Again, on 64, you just stand there and interact and you're good. Pick either option, it doesn't matter. Uh, same number of text boxes, same number of inputs. So I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna be hippopotamus. <laughs> gonna head back out and talk to Roll. Talk to Roll, skip. Text boxes, tutorials, cancel, cancel, skip, go to left. Alright, so here's something interesting here. So there's a little route difference you can do that's a little bit down to uh, preference. Now normally, you have to, uh, you know, walk, get this cutscene to happen, skip, then you go on through. Now, there's a little bit of a routing difference you can do. Uh, there's a junk shop visit we take, and you can take it either now or later. Now, if you want to do the uh, one that I do, where I do that shop later, I just run up to them, talk, interact, and then next time I come back through here, that's when I do the junk shop visit. But if you want to do the uh, alternate route, you shop right now. And then you do the kids right after. And that might be, uh, it might feel better for you or might not. It's down to preference. So, if you're gonna do the shop right now, here's what it is. Buy is the first option. Second option is parts. Buy the 520, which is the Power Razor Alpha. All right, so here's why it might feel easier to go with this. I'm, I personally do the shop later, but you would like run to the right, few steps, then walk, and then you got it. So, it's really down to preference if you want to do it that way, or if you want to just run up to it like I do. And then do the shopping later. So it's, it's, it's optional, it's up to you. So, the other thing I want to mention about Kid Skip, that's what we call it, 
Uh, there's these discolored lines on the wall. Like right here goes from dark yellow to whatever that color is. And right here goes from that color again to like this, this olive tan color. So that line on both sides indicates the trigger zone. So as soon as I reach it, that cutscene will happen. <laughs> I'm surprised you can go into it from that direction and have it not work. That's interesting, I didn't actually know this. So you do want to face him to an extent. But yeah, that's the trigger zone. So the way I do it normally, I run all the way from there and then just keep in mind where the trigger zone is and then walk. So you can go with either direct, either way. You can either do the shopping now and kind of just run to the right and then walk or just go straight at it and then do the shopping later. Either way. Skip this. So here's another money backup you might want. You go in between the houses and this trash can here, it's another uh, item that we can sell for the same amount of money. The last item I picked up and this one right here, they're both items for the uh, vacuum special weapon. But we don't need that in the speedrun. If anything, you only pick these up just to sell them for extra backup money. So, do that later. And hopefully you don't get run over. <laughs> go north door. We're gonna go to the left side. It's apparently one frame faster. And I'll take Furry's word for it, but I still need to see the evidence. So talk to either policeman, but since we came from the left side, talk to the left one. Skip. Skip. Leave. Skip this. I can jump over the fountain, or I can run around it. Not a big deal. Jump off a ledge. Alright, so Tron being attacked by the dog. The playing English version, if you watch my tips video, you have to talk to her, and then talk to the dog, and then wait a little while before you can finally skip it. But we're here on the Japanese version, so we can just kick him. Skip. Alright, so... Next we need to go to the sewer. The easiest way to do the movement is to just jump backwards twice, and your movement is set up for you. What I personally prefer to do, it's either faster or slower depending on what angle you choose. I just run backwards and I turn my angle a little bit and then I'm good. But for the easiest thing to do, just jump backwards twice. And then hold the hold the angle and easy peasy. Yeah, going through the sewer here is faster than going through the shop. Go through the hole. Drop down here. Go back up. Skip this. Now, interesting thing about 64 is that this particular section right here is nice because on the 64 I have to do is just go up right and talk to Roland. She's kind of like right here. But on every other version of the game, you have to like, like do a little bit of diagonal running. So anyway, talk to her. Skip. So if you do the shopping later, here is where you do it. Just keep, you know, going over here, run past her, go do the shopping, buy the 520 buster part. So I guess one more thing I should have mentioned, if uh, you want to be safe with your runs and try to keep yourself alive, you want to buy items first and buy the 650. This is going to be your energy canteen. Buying this won't impact your uh, money riding all that much. So if you want to be safe about things, keep yourself alive, go ahead and buy that. And of course buy the 520 buster part. And now, at any point before you reach this door, pause, go to your buster parts, and put on that other part. So now your buster is plus three attack. If you did the shopping earlier, you have plenty of time to equip it whenever you want. Just at some point, equip it before you go through this door. Now, here's where uh, things are going to get a little bit tricky, and I want to be splitting this video up into a little bit more, uh, let's call it segmented. Because there's, uh, we got, we got a gauntlet of bosses coming up, so that's why I need to explain things in much more detail. Because up to this point, it's just been 
basic routing and pathing explanations and chopping and stuff. But now we're getting into the bosses, so this is where the real practice is going to come in and why you should play on emulator. So once you've gone through the door and skipped the cutscene, you'll be here at the Bloom Bears fight. The way this fight works is that you want to deal a certain amount of damage to get their health bars to appear at all. I believe that damage is collectively, or it's on one of the three, I'm not sure exactly, but all I know is that you have to deal a certain amount of damage, the health bars appear, then you can finally take them down and then grab the key. Now once the health bars appear, the red one on the left is going to toss the key to the blue one on the right. So our goal here is to get the health bars to appear and take out the blue one as soon as we can, as fast as possible. And then we also want to grab the money from the blue one exploding. So there's a couple of strats I want to go over. The first one is going to be an easier old school strategy that's, you know, easier to comprehend, easier to understand. And then there's a second one that's a bit tougher, but is faster by a handful of seconds with a tricky roll at the end. So first, let's go over the classic strategy. So what I want to do to first is strafe run to the right and kind of strafe in a circle around the blue one while shooting three volleys with the third one being stuttered. And that'll make the health bars appear. And then I'll throw three mines at him, shoot him with one buster shot, and then stand inside of him. So that when he blows up, I'll insta-grab all the money, then I just grab the key. So, straight front to the right. One, two, start to the third. One, two, three, shoot. Stand inside, grab the money, then grab the key. So, I'll do it one more time. Straight front to the right, circle around him. One, two, start of the third. One, two, three, shoot. That's something that can happen sometimes where you can get shot by the red guy. That's one reason why you want to move to the side or move away or something, because you want to bait his machine gun fire away. And then you finally stand inside the blue one just before he blows up. So, one more time. One, two, three. One, two, three, shoot. Bait the fire away. And there we go. So, that's the classic strat. That's... Not as fast, but easier to understand. So here's the more complicated strategy that's pretty swaggy, but is also faster. So it's going to be in two parts. The first part is, of course, reactivate the health bars. And the second part is where you kill the blue one quickly. So the way I'm going to activate the health bars fast is I'm going to hold forward and square to shoot two buster shots while running straight at the yellow one. And then I'm going to tap right while I'm moving towards him, just for like a couple frames or something, just so I run up to the right tire. It, it helps for consistency, especially on 64 version. And then once I reach him after shooting two shots, I press triangle to throw one mine. Hold four and square, tap right. Throw a mine. There you go. Health bar is instantly activated. That's something you especially want to do on 64 because of how different the collision is. It, it's really strange. I don't know why. And the next part is, of course, killing the blue one. Just like the other strategy, we're going to strafe around him, but we're just going to shoot one volley. And right when we get to the back of him, around here, that's when you throw a few mines. So, the reason why you want to get behind him like that is because you're using his body to shield yourself from the bullets of the other guys. So you'll kind of see what I mean. I want to get over there behind him after activating the health bars, and his body's going to shield me. See, they can't hit me. I can only get hurt once he starts moving, so... You want to use that time behind him to throw your mines. It's going to take three, then maybe a buster shot. So, like, you're behind him. One, two, three. You want to shoot, and then kind of run away. Because the other two are still going to be shooting at you, and you kind of want to bait their fire away, so... Once you've baited their fire away, you kind of stand roughly around one of the... Like, roughly on the, uh line where his body is going to be, then you roll as he blows up, you will instantly grab the money and the key. So I'll see if I can demonstrate that here. So activate the health bars. Three shots. One, two, three. Shoot, run away. I almost had the correct angle, but either way, you have to run away to bait their shots away, step back into his body, and just as he blows up, you roll. Let's try it again. Activate the health bars. One, two, three. One, two, three, shoot, run away. 
Step inside, roll. And again, I almost had the correct angle for the key, but either way, that's how the strategy works. I'll show you a fully, you know, completed successful attempt. All right, so next is Feldinot, Tron's four-legged robot. But before I even talk about any strategies, I need to point something out. This leg to my left, going with extra gray plating on it, has a different hit sound if you pay attention. That means that whenever that leg takes enough damage, there will be a stun animation that will interrupt whatever it is she's trying to do. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. Kind of like that. So the key to the whole fight here is that we want to immediately get behind that leg, quick turn, and then throw mines down. And we're going to be trying to get her into a stun lock, or a semi-stun lock where we keep throwing mines, backing up and throwing more. So I'm going to go over two different ways to do it in terms of movement, because one of them, it's easier to do movement-wise, but the positioning makes it harder to get a stun lock. Whereas the other one is much more awkward in terms of movement, but has an easier time getting the stun lock. So it's kind of a pick your poison sort of situation. So you'll kind of see what I mean as I demonstrate them both. So the first strategy we're going to do is move diagonal up left for a few steps, run straight forward, turn around, and then hold triangle to throw mines. And as the leg gets close, back up so it doesn't hit you. All right, that's really close. Yeah, kind of like that. See, as it started to get close to me, I started backing up and turning slightly and just throwing more mines at it, just to make sure that the leg doesn't touch me. Because you want to back up around every two to four or five mines or something. It's it's very... There's, there's a lot of improv invo involved in this strategy because it's dependent on your angle when facing her, how close the leg is, all that kind of stuff, but just practice it a little bit and you'll see what I mean. You just want to make sure the leg doesn't touch you. And speaking of leg touching you, you want to make sure that when you're moving diagonal up left, if you don't move diagonal up left enough, then at the very start of the fight, the leg can hit you and just ruin your day. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I want to purposely not move enough. I like this, bonk, knocked over, and then the whole fight goes out the window. So. Make sure you move enough just to clear the leg, then turn around and start throwing your mines. And again, as the leg gets close to you, back up and throw more mines. Just keep doing that over and over again. Make sure you don't get hit, or at least not knocked over. So here's another attempt at it. It's getting close. Don't get touched, don't get hit by the leg. Back up, throw some more mines. And there you go, that one was a little bit more messy, but either way, you get the point. Just get behind the leg, throw mines, back up, throw more. And that's how that strategy works. I'm going to show you what the stun lock looks like, but the timing of your quick turn and the positioning and everything, it's very, very precise when it comes to using this particular strategy, so I wouldn't rely on getting it, but if you get it, you know, celebrate, because that's, that's our strategy to get. So that's what the stun lock looks like. Again, the precise position and the timing of when you quick turn all makes it really difficult to get. So it's doable with that strategy, but again, very precise. Now before I even get into the second strategy, I want to mention that it is possible to land buster shots on the leg as you're moving, but there's one extremely important key detail is that you want to shoot after you have begun moving. Like, you can start moving for like one or two frames or something and then start holding square, but do not hold square before you have started moving. Because you will stand still for a few frames, and that is enough to make Tron want to drive with invincibility across the whole map, so... I'll demonstrate what that looks like and why it's a bad thing. Like that. 
That's why you do not want to be holding square ahead of time. Wait until you've started moving first and then shoot. Because the next strategy I'm going to talk about, having those extra shots on the leg helps a lot. More so than it does with the other strategy. So, you'll see what I mean as I explain it. So the second strategy. The movement forward is a little bit awkward, but it goes kind of like this. You're going to move diagonally up left, turn the camera right a little bit while still moving diagonally up left. And you'll be at a weird position that's diagonally behind the leg, but closer to the body. Like this. Kind of like that. And the thing that makes it interesting is that, provided you add the buster shots, it can lead to an eventual stun lock or an instant stun lock. But I'm going to go over the movement first with the buster shots added. So move diagonally, turn right, keep moving diagonally, add in the buster shots once you've started moving. Turn around, and that's when you start throwing mines, and then you'll start seeing one of two results if you did it right. Where the stun lock will happen eventually as she's rotating towards you. She can even potentially hit you in the head with her leg as she's doing the stun animation, and the stun lock might still happen at the end of it. Or everything will just work out right and you'll get the stun lock immediately. Okay, so now that Feldinot's dead, we can begin the City Hall section, which is uh, it's terrible, full of RNG, it's caused many resets, and is where a lot of people struggle. But we'll go over that in detail. But before that, I want to mention, that, mention some little movement optimization here. So at the end of the fight, you want to run diagonally so that you're moving to the right with data to your left. The reason for that is... I see a lot of newer runners take this movement path where they go to the left and Data's to the right. The reason why that's bad is because you kind of have to swerve around him to get to the door. Whereas if you do this, then you talk to him, you can just immediately move to the right and you're right there at the door, no issues. So, either way, talk to him, heal up, get your minds back, and then it's time to do the City Hall section. So, it's time to go into detail about this dumb thing. So the city hall section, if you've beaten this game, you kind of know how it works already. You have to take out the flying guys and then take out the ground guys afterward because the flying guys will go pick up more ground guys to replace them. And while they're flying away, they're pretty much unhittable and they're away for a long time. So that's how it plays out. Pretty sure you already knew that. But here in a speedrun setting, what we're going to do is we're going to damage the first yellow guy we see. This guy right here. Now what we want to do is run up to him while shooting one volley of buster shots. So three shots and throw two mines at him. Now what he can do is he can either just move straight forward towards the fountain or sit and turn into another direction. But you want to deal some early damage to him if you can. And once you do that, you want to immediately look up or get away from him, then look up and shoot at the next flyer. So... I'll show you what I mean. Do some damage on this guy first. Two mines. Look up. Then there's this pink flyer. Shoot two volleys at him. Then I'm going to run forward towards this corner of green right here. And then look up. Shoot two volleys at him. Then I'm going to stand near this trash box. Turn around. Deal whatever damage I can for them as they fly around me. And then now that they're in this state where they're just, they're just orbiting you, that's when you just shoot him down. So lead your shot. They take 12 shots, I believe. And if your shots are whiffing, chances are you're not leading your shot enough. See, I'm not leading enough, so my shots aren't hitting. You want to aim further ahead. If your shots aren't landing, chances are you're just not leading hard enough. So if you think you're not leading enough, lead further. And then they go down. Then it's time to take out the ground, guys. So before I cover the ground guys, let's go over the flying ones again and the way the whole start works. So again, get some early damage on the first ground guy in the middle of the two light posts. You don't really have to do this, but it just helps. Alright, so one volley, two, go towards this corner of green right here, two volleys, 
towards the trash box, turn, get some damage on them while you can. Turn to the left because they're going to be dropping bombs as they fly overhead. And then they're going to orbit you, then you just take them down. And the pink one, he has a very strange flight pattern. He can kind of fly really far away from you and then really close to you on the other side, so... Either way, that's the flying dudes. It just takes some aiming practice and just going over the uh, beginning steps a bunch of times. And now the ground dudes. They are the reason why this section sucks. So, this orange guy, he's always going to attack City Hall. And he's the reason why the cutscenes are going to be playing. Then you have a ground dude who's... Whoa. That's really cool. Anyway, you have a ground dude who's always going to be around the police station zone, somewhere around the right side of the map. There's somewhere around here, usually. Like, these are zones where they like to hang out in. They're not guaranteed. Then you have the first guy that we attacked. He's going to be towards the fountain, somewhere around City Hall. And you have a dude over there on the left side of the map, near the bank or somewhere around there. And again, you have this orange guy who's always targeting City Hall. Is he going to destroy it right now? Close. And then there's one other thing I have to talk about. Is that if you want to do the route for the whole run really well, you want the police station to stay alive, and you want the bank to stay alive. It's destroyed right now, so a good run right here, this will be a reset. But either way, take down the ground dudes after you've taken down the flying ones. They typically take around, I want to say, three shots while you're running towards them. Three mines. That was the weaker guy that we damaged earlier. This one. One, two, three. Three mines. And then you can shoot like one or two buster shots as you're finishing them off and going towards the next one. The orange one is an exception. He takes one, two, three, one mine. And then again, a buster shot as you're finishing off and running towards the next one. So because we're starting the flyer section, like where we kill them, we're kind of over here. So that usually means that when we finish them off, we can immediately kill the guy who's around the police station. So the police station is typically safe. But then we have to kill the fountain guy, the city hall guy, and then we have to hope that the bank guy doesn't destroy the bank before we get there. So, again, this is all just a huge amount of RNG. So, uh, really sucks. So, let's go over it one more time. Going to pre-damage the yellow guy in the middle. Shoot the first flyer that's next to us for two volleys. Run forward, do the same. One, two. One volley, two volleys. Get near this corner. One volley, two. Near the trash box, turn. Deal some damage while you can. Get away from the bombs, damage the blue one, if you can. And then it's time to lead your shots and take them down. All right, now we find our yellow boys. All right, so we have this guy, we pre-damaged him. And then finally our bank guy. He pushed the mine with the front. I've never seen that before. But anyway, you want to avoid collecting any zenny, except for the final dude that you kill, because wasting time collecting the zenny, you know, it's wasting your time. You don't, you really, you don't need all of that zenny. Just grab the zenny from the ones the, la the last guy you killed, which is usually going to be the bank guy. And then the music goes silent, and then it's time to get ready to fight Bon Bon. So. Uh, well, we'll, we'll cover Bon Bon next, but there's two strategies we have for him. One that involves a coin flip, and one that's fairly easy to get down. Okay, it's time for Bon Bon. So I'm going to go over two strategies. The first one is pretty easy to get down. We're going to run to the left. This can work for the right side too. But run to the left, stay near the ledge. You want to line yourself up with the ledge on the opposite side. Don't go further than this. Because if he goes past it... He will fly back to City Hall. Either way, once you have him here, just throw mines at him. 
and it goes down just like that. Now there's a couple key details, like I already told you about lining up with the ledge. If you go any further than that, he'll just stop bothering with you, then fly it back to City Hall to destroy it. Now the other, one of the other details is don't move so far away from the ledge, because then he will very likely just float over it, give it enough time and space, and then, and then it's over. You can't keep him locked down there to throw mines at him. And the next detail about it is do not shoot him with your buster while he's floating towards you. Do not do it. I'll show you why. So I'm lined up and everything. And oh no, I shot him. And now he starts shooting missiles and it starts ruining stuff. So you can kind of see that I didn't get knocked over, so it was fine, but to be safe, just don't shoot him. Just let him come to you. But either way, all you really do is just stay close to the ledge as you're running there. Line up with the ledge on the opposite side. That's your max distance. Stay near the ledge so he doesn't float over. Alright, don't want to go any further. Let him start the clap attack and you throw mines. Pretty easy. Might take a few attempts to get it down at first, but overall, pretty easy. It's like your guaranteed backup strat if the next one I'm going to talk about fails. So the second strategy, it's much, much tougher if you get unlucky, and it saves around 5 to 7 seconds, somewhere around there. I don't know how much exactly, but the reason why I'm out here after the fight's already over is because I want to at least sit here and talk about what what the deal is so if you watch some experienced runners you usually see that after we kill the final ground guy we run a little bit towards the middle and then look in front of city hall for these two lamp posts this one and this one we want to see if we have one or both of them because we're gonna have bonbon bon try to use the clap attack on us get stuck on one of them and it gives us an opportunity to just sit there and throw mines at him so what's gonna happen is for the first, the good pattern that we want, which is the clap attack at the very start, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to run straight forward at the start, stop here on this line on the ground, stop here. We well, don't have to stop here, just run up to it. And if he's floating just straight towards you, he's going to do the clap attack, and then you run to either one of these poles. Personally, I prefer the left one, but it really doesn't matter. Just go to whichever one you have. And then you turn towards him or use lock on. He's going to fly towards you with the clap attack. And then you begin throwing mines at him while you're next to the pole. So he's going to get stuck on it. The clap attack gets interrupted. He's going to try to punch it and destroy it. And if things went well, then the punch attack will also get interrupted. And you just keep throwing mines at him. And he's going to be doing other attacks and just still usually will not blow it up. So I want to show you what it looks like to do it correctly with the clap attack. Okay, I skipped the cutscene. Run up to the line, throw mines, and he's dead. Just like that. It's really just that simple. Run up to the line, run up to whatever pole you have, face him, throw mines, and dunzo. Alright, so the other issue with that fight is if he gives you missiles. So that's why it's a coin flip. So if he gives you missiles at the start, you have to really react to it and think about which pole you have. It's why it's ideal to have both in case he does give you missiles. But what you want to do is, when you run forward, you have to react to whether or not he gives you missiles. And what you do there is, let's say we have the right pole. We're going to use the right pole. So we run up to him, react to him doing missiles. Then you have to run back a little bit, turn your camera slightly towards, you know, the other pole. And then wait until the missiles are just about hit to hit you, then you roll, and you run to the right like this, and you get next to the pole, and then Bon Bon should be doing the clap attack. And then just before he reaches the pole, step forward a little bit, just a tiny bit, and then you start throwing your mines at him. Because if you're right next to the pole, it's somewhat unlikely that they'll hit them. They'll be just barely below him. But if you're if you make that little step forward, then you'll be inside of him and the mines will be hitting him 
almost no matter what. Most of the time, anyway. But this set of movement here takes a lot of practice because it's very finicky. It has a little bit of improv to it, but either way, run forward, react, run back, turn slightly, roll, run towards the pole. Then just before he reaches you, make that little step forward, then throw mines. So I'm going to show what that looks like. So that's kind of how that strategy works. That's how you deal with the bad pattern of missiles. Waste a little bit more of your time so you're not getting the full time save, but... Either way, that's what you want to do if you want to do the hard strategy that saves more time. But if you're just starting out, I really recommend you just go with that much easier strategy where you just bait them over towards the ledge on the far side. Way easier to get down, you're not going to lose runs that way, so... Yeah. So now that you skip those scenes, run up to here, run up to the door, interact, skip. Run to this next door. And then skip this cutscene. We're just going to run past all the enemies. Just follow along this path, stick near to the right wall. Your movement is good, you don't have to worry about that tank whatsoever. You'll miss every time. And just keep going over here to the left. Around the mountain here. Again, ignore the tanks. Through the cave. Across this bridge here. On 64, there's no bridge, funny enough, but movement's pretty similar. I'm going to come up here to data. Heal again because we need more splash mines. And then we go through the cave, and then we start the marble fight. But first, just go upright, ignore the tanks. Now here's where the fight starts. Okay, it's a Marwolf. There's a few things to this fight, but it's overall not very hard. The worst thing about it is that it has RNG. So what you're going to do first is roll to uh, the side, and you want to roll in a direction that makes him move to the left. Now, it's easily manipulatable. He moves to the direction opposite of you. So if I roll to the left, he's going to go right. See that? We don't want that. We want him to move to the left. So we have to roll to the right. Or you can go down right and stay in the corner and then roll left. So it's do whatever you want, really. It's just as long as you get him to move left. So this is the easiest thing in my opinion. Go to the corner, then roll left. And then you just climb up the ledges. If you have time to, kill the tank for some zenny. Then you're going to dodge this attack. Then you jump on his back, wait till the door's about to open. Alright, so that was the bad coin flip. So one of two things can pop out of the door. It can be either a set of bombs that have wings on them. We call them birds. They could be bats, whatever. All I know is that they're flying bombs. And they make this, you know, chittering, chirping noise as they come out. So if you hear that while you're going up the ledges, then that's the good pattern. But when you're on his back, you want the serve bot holding a bomb. Because when you're on his back and a serve bot comes out, when you get bomb second, then you have enough time to deal enough damage. Because as you saw here, he gave me birds while I was up here. It didn't give me enough time to one cycle him. But if I get bomb when I'm up there, then I can take him down in one cycle. So here's an emulator practice tip. So what normally comes out of there is... So okay, so this safe state is going to get a serve bot holding a bomb every time. So again, this is emulator practice tip. This is not worth doing on console. But for emulator, you want to practice what RNG patterns you want. Shoot the wall and create a spark. This might change the result. See? So for emulator, if you want to practice, shoot the wall and you'll change the RNG. This technically works on console, but you're manipulating a result you don't know that you're going to get yet. So for emulator, shoot the wall to create a different result.
So the fastest pattern we want is while we're scaling the cliffs here, while we're going up the ledges, we want bird first. Because the Surbot takes longer to end that attack. Dodge. Now I don't know if I'll get bombed second, because that's ideal. And we did. And we got him. So, that's the ideal pattern right there. You want birds first, bomb second. And while this is happening, you go over there and kill that tank for extra zenny. So let's go over the whole fight one more time. So I know what RNG this save state's going to get, so... On console, you don't know. But either way, I'm emulator. Let's do that shot manipulation so we know what the good pattern is. Which is birds. So come up here. Tank. Some zenny. This might still be the same pattern. And it was. So while he's blowing up, come over here. Blow up this tank for extra zenny. Mess with this sir bot, maybe. And that's Marwolf. So, jumping on his back can be the challenging part, but as you just do it and practice a lot, you'll, you'll, you'll start getting on his back pretty much every time. It's just, you know, roll late to dodge the orbs so you don't get hit. Make sure he goes to the left, this way. And then hope for a good pattern, and then by the time you get up on his back, you also hope that you get bomb instead of birds. But, either way, that's Moral Wolf. So as soon as the fight's over, you go down left, then you jump to the right up on these steps. Horse text box. Don't jump through this. Confirm. Let's get the scenes. Now if you want to do a funny thing with Mega Man facing the camera, mash start and circle. Then you react to the cutscene skipping and then just mash only circle. <laughs> Neat little trick. Alright, time to enter the car. Talk to Roll. And this is one of the big differences when it comes to English and Japanese with text boxes. There's way more here in, J in uh, English. But anyway, so the options here in Japanese, this one is Talk, this one is Special Weapons, this one is Develop, and this one is your Fast Travel. I forget what's called in English, but either way, it's like Support Car or something. So. We're going to press up twice, go to the car, and then your options for fast travel are usually going to change around a little bit depending on where you're at and where you've been. But the first one here at the top will always be Carden Forest unless you're already in Carden Forest, which then the first one will always be downtown. But since we're not in Carden Forest, first one will always be Carden Forest, so let's go there. And then... Exit the car. And this is where I'm going to conclude this part one here for early game. Part two will be the mid game, which will be uh, the next dungeon, whatever is immediately after this, and all the way up to probably close the ruins or maybe even the sky battle. But either way, this is part one. So I thank you for watching, and I hope you've learned a lot so far. If you're still interested in learning the run, then keep watching the following parts, and I'll see you later.